Okay guys, I am going to try something here. I've watched um, several videos on the Nicoletta Sicholi. I love watching them because it's such a great deck and I really love it. But I think a lot of people are missing out on some insight that they could have because the book that accompanies it doesn't really go into a lot of detail. I love the things that they say. This is my working notebook. I'm going to keep checking to make sure I'm in frame here. Um, I take this to the conventions when I'm studying something. Uh, I put the most important things I'm working on. Every journal has the Queen of Cups and the um, Queen of Wands at the book ending it because that's my best friend. And I love it in the zombies. So these ARC notebooks are great. I just took an old album cover. And I want to do a video on charm casting. Carrie Paris, who I met at uh, BATS last year, just really got me into that. But this is my workbook, so to say, when I'm studying things. And my future videos that are going to be talking about where I get my correspondences elemental wise to put my my quartz in order come from my study here and it goes against a lot and then my I either see it as a process or I see it as a, a personality which is two completely different things and I view both of those differently than a lot of people see it. But this is just, I mean, there are journals that I've built up. But this is just like the um, culmination of those. So I'm trying to get to where I thought I had bookmarked it. That's, oh my goodness, I forgot about that. That was... Um, Bill Cosby was in the Bahamas, and his first concert back in the States was in Melbourne, which is a few hours away, and I protested, not against him, against the victim shaming. I'm a, I'm a rape crisis advocate. I've worked as a counselor and all that, and I was so surprised. I, I got there, and there were three protesters. Two. Another one joined us, but... Okay, oh, here we go. Now, I copied the little white book to study it, and it did give a lot of insight into the cards, but there's so much that you'd miss. And I'm going to refer to that. I'm going to refer to it when we go through some of the cards, but I also have notes on um, the Oracle coming up. And here's some things about, here's some things about um, Nicoletta. She uh, still lives in San Marino. It's a sovereign state that's close to Italy and um, she prefers everyone who looks at her work to come away with their own interpretation. In this way a sense of mystery remains. I want people to consider their childhood and nightmares. Her girls are all a bit Alice and it's from the transformation from childhood into adolescence and Wonderland, you know, a sense of Wonderland is usually the setting and many of her themes explore childhood innocence and the loss of innocence and that trans transition into adulthood. And she does it, I think, with a mischievous sense of sensuality. And she blends the sweet and innocent with this beauty with the macabre. And she uses the titles of her art not only as humorous, witty, or insightful tools, but at times the title is just to create more mystery. And she tells of an artist whose painting of a pen was entitled, This Is Not a Pen. And she loved that. So I don't know why the guidebooks in the tarot or the oracle don't have the name of her prints on there because it's so telling. So I fell in love with the Nicoletta right away. Um, I had a lot of her prints already printed out. There was a time when I, and I use these as my own oracle decks, I printed out, I was in this, this mood, you know, and I, there was a lot of Mark Ryden and Benjamin Lancome and uh, Ray Cesar and all these different artists. And I would um, use different ones for different times. Just beautiful, 
beautiful stuff. I mean, here's some Benjamin Longcomb. And a lot of these artists, some of them, uh, they illustrated, just like Nicoletta, illustrated for storybooks, but also did their fine art in galleries and all that. And the ones that struck me the most, um, one were, let's see, here's... This is uh, a friend of mine who's an artist in St. Pete, Leslie Burke, and I've bought several of her paintings, and so I like that she did that as a tribute to my dog. There's a Tamara de Lampica, Ray Cesar. This ended up being my Eight of Swords, but um, it runs the gamut, as you can see, and I was also, I loved Shelley Corbett's Underwater Girls. I became obsessed with those. And I made an art deck from those that um, my friends and I used that I loved. And I put pictures of my girlfriends and artwork that I liked, but it was all like girl power, you know? And I love making a deck because you pour over which one. But I also believe in supporting the artist whenever possible. If I rework a deck or make a deck, I have bought as much of the artist things as I could. And when Shelley Corbett came out with her deck, I of course snatched it up and I would recommend it for anybody. But our, um, our focus here is Nicoletta. This is a journal that I had started and this is basically the basis for my meme deck that I'm working on with my um, 16 personality court cards. But I took a piece of paper for every card and there was a print there's a Nicoletta you know this is the five of cups I would put from the little white book but I also had I used vellum in between I had the wild unknown image also I thought it was a good dichotomy and I would put quotes or sayings and then I'd also have pictures in vellum and this ended up being my five of cups oh take me back to the start and um, this was really the beginning of the deck that I made, but it was my, my love for Nicoletta and what it brought out in me that started that. So I have several of her decks, like this one when I lost a few, I put it on a ring and I would just like pick, you know, one to look at for the day. So, um, and this happens to be a favorite of hers called Arcadia that I hardly ever see anywhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a few of her art books because I think that that could give great insight to the cards. So many of her cards are in these books. There's um, this beautiful one that I got off of eBay that I want to meet someone who, uh, who knows Italian that can tell me it's the, the pictures that I know under different names with, uh, with pages in Italian that I'd really love to know what, what she's saying. And then a children's book. Um, she has several children's books, but I just loved the words that she used in this dignity of dragons, just her way of speaking, the pandemonium of fawns, faculty of centaurs, just so, so many. It's just a beautiful beautiful book. But the three we're going to be concentrating that have the bulk of the cards in both of her decks are Daydreams and then Beautiful Nightmares, which is being sold now um, with another cover. And The Sweet and Low, this is a collection of her recent arts. And it was a gallery show in New York that I couldn't go to, but I did buy the uh, book and it has several, especially the ones that are in her Oracle. I put my deck here. Most of the cards we'll talk about, but there were a few I set aside because um, they weren't discussed in the books, and I just want to give my thoughts on, on those. So we're going to start with daydreams. I'm going to make and check them in frame. I don't want to be too close or too far away. And see if this helps give any insight into the world of your Nicoletta deck. Okay, we've got, there's Olympia, the ace of uh, cups, but we'll get to her. 
Okay, it starts off with Toy Stories. There's Scary Bunny. It's My Party is a pretty scary one that isn't in either of the decks, and I'm glad. Uh, that's one of the scariest ones to me. Look, this girl's getting flattened by a dildo-looking toy, and yeah, we're just going to skip over that one. That right there, that's merry-go-round. That's the ten of discs, and I want to go back to the meanings, where I wrote the meanings, because sometimes I do like with the little white book, when you put that with the... Um, with the title, you get a fuller sense. I never really had a problem with connecting with this ten of, of discs. Uh, there are no limits to what you can achieve now. Material prosperity may come to you in unexpected ways, especially through the help of others. So, this has to be, and of course we're going to start with it. The card, this is parallel thinking, it's the four of discs. It's the one that I don't really connect to as the four of discs. Um, some people see it as a miser or uh, being, you know, financially really tight or watching your money. And that's a part of it. But to me, it's guarding what goes in and out, energy-wise, everything. Because if you're not careful, you're going to be expending more than you get. And that leads you to the five of discs. So um, what it says for the four of discs in this is find possessions alone won't bring contentment. Don't focus on material gain to the point where you are separated from uh, life's true joys. So that makes sense, but I have to admit it's not one of the ones I connect the most with. Now there's our world and it's called Glass Globe and it's the end of a cycle in itself. It's a complete world in itself, but it also shows that it's time to shake things up and start over. Here is Nescondino, Scary Bunny. I discussed this as the Nine of Swords in comparison to the Eight of Swords in one of my previous videos. It's a nightmare. Little girls are having a nightmare about this huge bunny. This will be in the Oracle. I don't know how to, um, how to pronounce that, but I think it's poorly guarded girl is what it, what it means. No, 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 this is Playfellow. Playfellow. And it is in the Oracle and it talks about, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, curiosity, there's just playful curiosity or natural curiosity and also knowing about boundaries. So you will find in a few of these pictures, there tends to be objects heading towards, uh, that area with some of the curls. Here is the Big Bang Theory. It's the Knight of Swords. I think it's a great Knight of Swords. I mean, she's off, you know, and the big, the, the Knight of Swords, they have their elegant plans. They're very smart, sometimes a little too smart for their own good. They haven't received that receptivity, you know, but they, they know their plan and they're going for it. So I think that one's great. This one is Passaggio Blue. Six of Swords is it's just a very beautiful card to me, and it wasn't until I saw the bigger print that I noticed that her boat is actually coffin-shaped, her bunny's crying for her, but it, it's a peaceful passage into another, another place. This one, I don't think, she is an oracle, I think, and it's called Game Over. And um, his little, he had a little shield and his sword was actually like a calligraphy pen. I don't know what he did to piss her off, but she took care of him. This is girl poorly guarded that I didn't understand what that meant. And that's the truth. And it's not in either deck. That is the nine of swords, but I mean, <laughs> nine of swords, nine of cups, but we'll get to the bigger picture then. Um, this isn't in either deck. But you can see the theme of the girls here. They are not victims. Rarely are they victims. This is dirty dancing. And you can come up with any metaphor you want on that one. Here is the Five of Swords. Cracks me up. My friend and I always call it the bee sting. Because it cuts. And the name of that is As I Promised You. Awesome. That's just a detail of the Ace of Swords that we'll be getting to. Here's Night Walk. This is the Ten of Wands. And it says, the energy of the situation is oppressive and overwhelming. 
uh, you will only be more confused and exhausted if you persist. Step aside and let things settle down. I think that's a, a good one for a ten of wands. <laughs> Here's... I don't think she's in the Oracle, but I love her. Girls Don't Cry, named after a Cure song. She's cutting an onion, but she's, you know, definitely, you know, crying. Okay, either of these. Here we go. Here is the big picture of Eat Me, Drink Me. That is the Nine of Cups, the wish card. How could you get more perfect than that? That's just lovely. There's Cherry. She's the Queen of Wands. I like her. She's cute. But here's eye candy, the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is, uh, well, one, the Queen of Wands in my deck is the Nurturer. And there are great aspects, but then there's also very fiery aspects to that one. This one, the Queen of Swords, is the Mastermind. And she's very insightful, knows knows what she's doing even though others don't understand and insightful takes on a different look when you eye candy she's literally eating the eye off of the cake so yeah there is the ace of swords this is dulce amara bittersweet and that reminds me of now i have to look in my book of names because the Ace of Swords reminds me of a quote from Helen Keller that I don't want to screw up. So I'm going to look it up real quick. People don't like to think. If one thinks, one must reach conclusions. Conclusions are not always pleasant. Helen Keller. So I, I like Dulce Mara, bittersweet for the Ace of Swords. I think that's great. Here is the ten of swords and it is called just desserts reminds me of that Tom Petty video where the girl turns into the cake and they're eating her and it's funny because the ten of swords always to me denoted like put a fork in it it's done and literally that is what's happening in this card so now we've gotten to heavenly nightmares here is love will tear us apart I love this. Named after a Joy Division song. And it's the King of Cups. And the lovers are being kept apart by the ebb of the waters. And in my deck, it's the teacher giver. And the King of Cups, that personality type, they really, they give so much of themselves that they often neglect what they need. And they're often missing something in themselves. And I think that's a beautiful depiction. Here is captivity. This is the seven of wands and it's a battle. You know, whatever side you're on, you're going to be battling. And the difference between that and the five of swords will be uh, very clear when we get to Georgina tames the dragon as to captivity. Like if you're, you have to fight for your stance, not to be in captivity. It's a strong fight. This isn't in either deck, but I just love head or tail. This one, yes, I love this one. This is bliss, this is the lovers. It takes me back to the tale of Eve and the snake and how she was tricked and then we've all been fucked ever since then. But you look at this picture and she doesn't look tricked. She looks like she is more than willing to eat the apple and make that choice. And that's what the lovers is about, is choice. So I think it's a beautiful card for the lovers. Here is Release. This is the King of Pentacles. And she's releasing a bull. And, you know, she's going to overcome. As opposed to when you see the Queen, uh, the King of Wands, who's releasing a little dragon. He's more volatile. King of Wands gets it done too, but a little more volatile. This one isn't in either of the decks. Here's Cuddle. That's our Ace of Wands. It didn't right away speak to me as an ace of wands, but she is cuddling a fire salamander. This one was actually a tribute to another uh, artist, Aaron Westenfeld, I think. But I think it's a beautiful ace of wands. So different ones. Okay, here's two that are in the deck. This is Embragio, Embrace, or Hug. Um, from the picture, 
I don't get like the whole thing, but you can obviously tell, you know, that it's a meaning, a, a very um, heartfelt embrace. And since it is a card of regret or loss, I think that's beautiful. Now here we've got rapture, which is the devil in the tarot deck. And again, like with bliss, where, you know, she seemed totally into it. You read these stories, like I think of vampire stories and all that, where they willingly give themselves up. And a lot of times with the devil, we get kind of hypnotized, you know, I think and willingly let it get out of control. Here is um, Soulmates, which is the Two of Cups, which is pretty self-explanatory. And Olympia, our Ace of Cups, which is about self-love and acceptance. The kiss is beautiful. This is in the Oracle, Visitation. There's another one a lot like it, but it's a different kind of visitation. This is the Storyteller. One I didn't connect with right away, but I'm going to go to the Nine of Wands here. All the power you need will be at your disposal when the time is right. You can relax for the moment and trust that if you know when, when to act, continue to build up your strength. So that's what she's doing. She's not, she's not worried. She's not being distracted. She's got her little cup of tea and she's resting, but she knows what's coming. She's not completely, she's not unaware. She's just resting. And there's Lenore. She's the moon and a beautiful moon card at that. Here is Teardrop Pearls. This is the Four of Cups. And in the card, and I'll show you, it's cut down. It doesn't have that name. And the fish is here and not so obviously on strings. And it's just, it looks like you're in the bubble because you want to be. You don't need to be encased in that. So, you know, appreciate what you have instead of crying for, you may actually have the thing you're crying for. Okay. Almost Alice, a collection of these. Um, here's the Seven of Cups, and this is another one where knowing the name helps a lot. Prova a Prenodermy. I'm saying it wrong, but basically it's try to take. And it added an aspect of the Seven of Cups. Not only do you have to make the right choice, timing is everything. If you just grab at things and you're not thinking about it and the timing's not right, you're never going to get the rabbit. So that's a, it added a, a little thing to the Seven of Cups for me. This bitch just has something against stuffed animals. It's called True Blood. She's, I don't know if her, either of those cards in either deck, but... And, and, and this one, look at her, shattered. She's just kicking the shit out of that. But this is in the Oracle. And it's, don't even think about barking at that door. Sorry, talking to the dogs. They usually go nuts. Okay, stop it. Okay, so this one is too fragile. And it's in the Oracle. And it shows something that the girls rarely show. And that's true sorrow. Everyone, the, the flowers are crying. This is sorrow for this um, broken egg that was too fragile. And that is the daydreams. Here we go into beautiful nightmares, which I said is being um, sold under a different cover now, but I think it's the same book. There's the hangman, we'll get to her. And the high priestess. There's our 10 of cups. It's the elephant's journey. This is the part that it shows on the card and um, I want to read what it says on the cups. Your allies and companions will see you through any dangers. You are on the path of success and happiness, thanks to their loving help. The elephant's journey. Me and my thing about elephants, I just love that. So, here's the princess and the prey. This is our strength card. And usually the strength card shows a softer side of strength. Like it's not the masculine chariot, it's the feminine, brave, smart kind of strength that gets the thorn out of the lion's paw. But this is the princess and the prey. And it definitely shows a, a certain kind of physical strength to get through it. Here's the elephant's journey, full. There's Agata, that's the chariot. Toyland, again, 
um, you know, the train moving right toward her there. Here is Last Days. That's the tower. It's called Last Days because the fall is inevitable and she knows it. Here's Rose Red. In the card, if you notice in your judgment card, the rabbit is holding the key behind his back, which he isn't holding in the original print. So he's giving her the, see all these other that are bloomed in trees? He's helping give her the key. The magician's assistant is the wheel. <sighs> yeah, I don't like it that she's, you know, actually got one stuck to her. But part of the wheel is it's not good or bad, it's fate. It turns and you're kind of helpless sometimes as to which way it's turning. That's the wheel of fortune to me. She's, she's just subjected herself to the fates. Four of Wands, Lollipop Land. That pretty much says it all. As opposed to the Knight of Wands, which is Candy Forest. I mean, he's on a joy ride. The Knight of Wands is all about adventure. This is one of my favorites, Casting Pearls, but I don't think it's in, in the deck. Um, the Girl in the Castle. I think pretty sure that's in the Oracle, but here's my Eight of Swords, Lucy. Lucy, who loves her little rabbit and dresses like her rabbit, and there's a real fear there. She's either trying to protect her rabbit or draw comfort from it, but they're going to see it through together, but that is that card breaks my heart as an Eight of Swords. There's Fight. Okay, here's our Tambourina, which is our Fool, but you don't see that part. It's beating to your own, following the beat of your own drum. She is so lovely. This is the Knight of Pentacles. And you know, all the knights are on a mission, but the because it's the, the Knight of Earth, it's the most grounded. This is the knight that is the most likely to see it through. In my deck, he's the doer of the guardians. And yeah, the rabbit may be falling apart. He's got hate me, he's getting hate mail and all that, but she's so lovely and she will see it through. Beautiful nightmares. I'm skipping through a lot of the ones that just aren't on either deck. Pilgrimage is the Six of Wands. I love seeing the elephant there. That's a part of Hide and Seek. We'll see the whole one later. Nocturne. There's Hide and Seek. There's our magician. And she's, is she leopard or is she girl? She's got leopard feet but a mask. I think it's, she has the power to go between which one she needs at that moment. Uh, this is Isis that will be in the Oracle. Crows, here's Marik Marik. This is the Two of Wands. I will read the wands. Focus on a goal. Illusion or enchantment may be keeping you from fulfilling your potential for success. Do not be over-influenced by attractive people and their plan for you. So she needs to focus, but she's too enamored on herself or other things to really focus. That one's called Marik Marik. And here is our King of Wands that I was telling you about, where instead of the bull, she's got the dragon coming out. And yeah, the King of Wands, you know, he's the provider. He gets things done, but he can be very volatile. Here's the Ice Princess. She's our High Priestess. There's a detail of Marique Marique. Cecilia isn't in the decks, but I love her. In Anima, this is the Three of Swords. Uh, you should look up In Anima. It has to do with Carl Jung's uh, whole perspective on the inner self and in a way that I can't explain in this video, but you'll gain a lot from by looking it up. And now we're into Water Girls. Here's the Queen of Cups. And she is all water. You know, here she has the fish coming up to talk to her. This is the psychic, um, the mist, not psychic, the mystic counselor. Evidently goldfish, love that. Here is Daphne, and she's our temperance card. And temperance, I mean, she's on a fish, but she's swimming through the air with fish in her hair. And she's laying there so content and makes it look so easy. But that's the thing. The expert makes the hard thing look easy. This is not just a state where you stop. This is a state that you're constantly striving 
to achieve when you when you're in a part of temperance where you can rest and it's like this is great that's good but know that it doesn't always look like that Eliza on the shore she's the page of cups and you know she's just she hasn't dove in but she's got her feet feet in the water I like this one and she's with water girls it's fisheye but she ended up being the four of swords and the four of swords is that mental time out to regain from the hurt caused by the three of swords and in that time out you should be able to get some insight and receptivity so here one arise is actually the fish even though it's a in the suit of swords it creates a balance of the two taking that time out here's mermaids and it's very self-explanatory but I like what it has to say in the book about mermaids happiness is multiplied when you share it with friends Dive into your friendships and rejoice in good company. Love, love, love it. Forbidden fruit. There's Georgina tames the dragon. See the difference between that and the captivity, the fight with the seven? This is the five. It may look scary, but you got this. It doesn't even have to be as big of a deal as it looks. She doesn't look very concerned. She's got her arsenal, you know, that's coming out. This is one of my favorites that isn't in either deck, but I just love Marguerite. I love how laid back and cool she is. There's a detail of the Six of uh, Cups. And in that one, it'll show a bigger one, but I love what it had to say. Look into your deepest memories to remember who you are and what makes you happy. Let others help you find yourself again. He's holding a mirror up to her. She's looking back into her childhood, looking back at to what made her happy and who she was. And it's a little harder to see in the bigger picture, but that is the Six of Cups. And here is the Eight of Pentacles. Serendipity. I love this picture. I think this print is gorgeous. Learning new skills and improving existing skills may require the help of a teacher who inspires by example find such a teacher or offer your own experience to others <laughs> that is just gorgeous to me so nicoletta love it okay that's the fight here's nectar this is the three of pentacles um let's get to the three don't try to do everything on your own good advice is at hand and others can help you make the right decisions for success and it is a card about collaboration of course it makes me think of Alice in Wonderland and the mushroom with the um, caterpillar on top but the crazy thing is in the past few readings when it's come up it's the three of disc I've always thought of it as collaboration but just lately it's been telling someone yes seek help build it together but it doesn't need to be a big group a trusted few be careful who you pick and who you trust in that endeavor that's just something that's come up recently for me there is uh, I love tree girl here's the hive that's the Sun pretty uh, easy to see the correlation there here's Adagia she is the page of Pentacles and Adagia is a collection of Greek and Latin proverbs. This is the craftsman in my deck, the craftsman of the guardians. There's a couple of pretty ones, but they're not in our decks as a page, as opposed to the page of wands. Flora, she's in bloom. I love that. In my deck, it's the composer or artist, and I used prints. So here's Snow White. And what I love about this picture, this is death in the tarot. Here she's eating the apple. They're all sad, but we all know the story. She's not really dead. This is just a, a state that she's in right now that she's not going to stay in. Weird and wonderful. Here's Wavo. It's the Ace of Pentacles egg. Very good for the beginning of a physical suit. And here's Cowgirl. And um, my friend that just commented and wanted to know what, what she was in my deck. And I said, you're the champion. The champion of the idealist. And that's, that's the cowgirl right there. There's a picture of Lita. She's coming up. <laughs> oh, 
the pussy girl. She's pretty cool. Here's some of my beautiful angels. Okay, here is our hangman, Angelina. For so many years, I saw the hangman as self-sacrifice. That's what I had learned. But over and over and over again, it's been seeing things through a new perspective that really, really change your point of view in a big way. You can, for a while, it's almost as you're of two minds about it because it's like, wow, is it really the way I'm seeing it? So yes, they're suspended, but what a perfect way to show seeing something through almost through somebody else's eyes and, and making it a part of your experience. There's Arcadia. I want that print so bad. I love Arcadia. Okay, and here's Lita. She's our Nine of Pentacles. And this is just a beautiful moment of self-recognition. Pat yourself on the back. You know, it's, it's a beautiful time that you've created this. And just sit there and soak it in. Here's Charlotte. I want to read what, what Charlotte, what it says. Learning new skills and improving... Um, existing skills may require, nope, 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 that's eight. I knew that was familiar. Charlotte, take your time to create something you can be proud of. Excellence takes time, but be true to your vision of what you will achieve with patience. That is the seven of discs to me. And if you've seen like spider webs and how, how they make up, how intricate it is, how beautiful it is, you know, it's what you're working for will come, but this is still a time to pay attention to details. Love Charlotte. Cheryl. Cheryl helped me see the Eight of Cups in a different way. Eight of Cups, walking away from something in order to get to a better place. And a lot of times it's, you know, some affairs of the heart in some way. Well, letting go of something doesn't necessarily mean walking away. Sometimes it's letting go. You're not the one walking away. Maybe you need to release something to let go of it. And there's my Kathleen. She is, um, it stands for pure and a take on, you know, cat. And she's gathered her mice, but she's taken care of them. Not one of the clearest pictures of the six of pens to me, but I'll go with it. Farfalla is the page of swords of air. The air of air to me, the perfect picture of air of air the nascent beginnings when you first start thinking of something and it's also called butterfly just love it here's a three of wands it's beautiful it's called bluebird and she's holding a bluebird and i see i i saw her a little bit differently but what it says is assess your losses and gains now and if necessary change your goals to align with the new information be um, be open to those who could thwart you. Be alert to those who could thwart you. You know, you see that fox there. Usually it's of help on the way. Well, the bluebird, that is her help on the way. You know, and now they're going to, you know, make a change of plans. But it's just a absolutely gorgeous print either way. So those are the two main books. The last one is from the show she had in New York, Sweet and Low, and a lot of these are from her Oracle, but there are a few tarot cards in there as well. Snow Bride. These are both in her Oracle. Um, All You Need Is Love. I love it with her little shoe being kicked off. And The Sweetest Journey. Those are both in her Oracle. The Land of Milk and Honey. That's in her Oracle and very reminiscent to me of... Mark Ryden's print along the same lines. There we see Cherry, our Queen of Wands, and Sweet as the Night. Pretty sure that's in the Oracle. For your eyes only, this is in the Oracle, and it I had to think about it. Like the name helped me. Like, what does that mean? For your eyes only. Maybe she's keeping her moves close to her chest, or only trusting, you know, certain advisors on what her future moves are. This is in the Oracle, Dangerous Liaison. Dangerous for him, he's getting trapped in her pentacles. Um, the Lovers is definitely 
in the oracle and it's a good contrast to another picture coming up that's similar eat me drink me there's our nine of cups again beautiful nine of cups now here is one of the most important ones that we can talk about this is one of my favorite and it it's so nicoletta it's on the cover of her oracle box uh, but the thing is that people don't really you know think or realize and i want to get to it so i don't i don't misquote wrong but it's dulcis agata and that sweet agata that is latinized form of the greek name agatha and derived from greek agathos meaning good saint agatha was a third century martyr from sicily who was tortured and killed after spurning the advances of a roman official and that totally changes the way you view this picture. She's not just holding a cloth to her chest and holding dripping candy. This is a, a desexualization. This that was robbed of her, but she seems to be giving it peacefully and willingly. She still is not the victim. There's so much in this image. And Nicoletta was raised, you know, with saints. And she talks about this one school she went to that was in this this castle. And um, this one is probably one of, to me, one of the classic Nicolettas that, that people look at and just don't realize the depth behind it. Both of these are in her oracle. This is Night Visitor. And see how it's different from the visitation with the octopus that was in the room? I think it's a different kind of visitation, a different lesson. And Lady Bluebell, which looks like it could come from one of her children's books. And Peeping Tom. That one's adorable. And there's Alta. She's definitely in the oracle. There's Cuddle. Again, her Ace of Wands. And Lorelei, this one, she's in the Oracle also. I love, love, love her. Almost Alice. You know, instead of going down the rabbit hole, it looks like the rabbit's going toward the Alice hole. It's very weird. Okay, this one is in the Oracle, Material Girls. I mean, look at it. They're just eating the shit out of that gingerbread man. And he's crying. They're like, this is yummy. Yay. And this one is Sweet Addiction. And it's sweeter. It's showing her like feeding the animal, not devouring it. Here's our Big Bang Theory, our Knight of Swords again. And this one, oh, it's in the Oracle. And it's another one that just kills me. By the time you are real. It's an homage to the Velveteen Rabbit. But you look at it and you think of how you think as a child and how things change. To me, that's, that's so sad and a six of cups kind of way by the time you are real oh i love it i can't wait for the oracle to get here love will tear us apart there's our king of cups again too fragile we saw that that's in the oracle the sadness <laughs> there's our badass queen of swords gaining insight by eating the eyeball eye candy and here's shattered She's just busting, busting him all to hell. And ninja, it's my party, and I don't want to go there. But one of the things I noticed, now here's some prints I had that I know are going to be in the Oracle. And I wanted to show the difference between the Riddle Princess and... They look a lot the same, but it's the differences that... Um, the lovers, the Riddle Princess and the lovers. I'll have to remember that. Or there's Alta. I don't know the name of her. She's just pretty. For your eyes only. This is one of my um, angels that I love. That's going to be in the deck. Material Girls. Lorelai. Too Fragile. Isis, Addicted to Love, Night Visitor, and we'll pull that aside. Here's the lovers. Now here's the visitation and Night Visitor. To me it's just 
two different kinds of visits. Sweet as the night. Land of milk and honey. Until you are real. Dangerous liaisons. Now here's the riddle princess. And here's true love. And see all the things that come between all that's going around. And the prince is down there looking at an eyeball. But there's all this stuff. But you take that away and he's finally on his quest. You know. So it knocks a lot of that out. And peeping Tom. So that's, and I don't know the name of um, this one, but I, I did know the name and I forgot. Same way with this. I thought the name was rather clever too and I can't remember it. And then there's our Dulce Sagata. Consumed by you, <laughs> which is pretty funny depending on what perspective you're looking at. There's Playfellow. Game over. And Lady Bluebell. So, oh, the only other thing I wanted to do is go through a couple of the cards that didn't go through the books. I thought Monk as the Hierophant, a monkey, <laughs> was pretty clever. I like the dichotomy between Justice, which is Castle of Cards, and the Tower, which is Last Days. The Star is actually named Moon Princess. There's Judgment with the key added to the rabbit. And this is interesting. I love the kings. We'd already talked about release and um, Mary, contrary Mary. Release and contrary Mary, king of pence, the king of wands. And we talked about the king of cups, level tears apart. This one is interesting to me. The king of swords. He's the executive and um, in my deck. And a lot of times, this personality type, they're very driven, but it costs a lot in their personal life. They're take care, uh, taking care of their family, but they're not there a lot. Uh, in my deck, I made the executive Madeline Albright because I know it's very rare for a woman to have this personality type. And I know one, one of my best friends, and she does it like a boss. And she mixes that. She definitely has a rich family life, but it takes a lot of work. So when I see this, you know, if you were to just see this as the King of Swords, you kind of think like he's sending out his missives and edicts, but I see it and seeing they're becoming little arrows and flying away. I see it as his writing to his family. It's love letters. This is why I'm doing this. I'll be home soon, you know, and keeping that close balance. That's just me. And the Queens, I love the Queens. There's Cherry, the Queen of Wands, with Just Like Heaven, the Queen of Pence. Love, again, a cure song. And these two together, which we've already looked at, but these internal queens, you know, the mastermind and the, the mystic counselor that counterbalance each other. I just, I love it. And there's our little... Our little four of wands and wa girl stuck in her bubble. The card that it didn't show, it did show where I didn't understand the four of pence so much, but this one does convey how I see the five of pentacles. It's not just financial poverty. It is being drained. I mean, that bird is like, it's bleeding heart and it's all in her, it, it's just completely engulfing her and draining her spiritually, mentally, emotionally. That is what this card means most of the time when it comes up in a reading for my clients. And fireflies. I didn't see these in any of the books, but I love her and messages going out. So that is basically um, it for my insight onto Nicoletta. Um, I'll end on just one little note. I doubt if there's anyone still watching, and if you are watching, if you are part of the live chat that Kelly and the Truth and Story had the other day, but I couldn't believe it. It was my first live chat I was involved in, and she's got, she's printing out a David's Tarot that I found years ago and printed out, and if you can just, just Google it, look it up online, it sees simple lines, but they say so much, and I did this years ago, so I get onto the live chat, and there they are right there. And I just, I thought it was awesome. So 
This week I really am going to start back on my series. I want to really look at the quartz um, and get them down in the two ways that I see them. But um, this is it for today, so I hope you guys are having a good one, and I'll see you soon. See ya.